After all these years, still the number one question I'm asked all the time is green stage finishing a zirconia. In this video, which actually played for Lab Day Fall Online, I'm gonna basically generally show my techniques to green stage finish zirconia and the tools and instruments I use to do it. Hope you enjoy, thank you. So first we're just gonna basically talk about some of the tools and instruments I use Green stage finishing. I've been using Renford Brilliant Discs forever. They are amazing. Um, they cut really true. Uh, they're really, really nice. They keep cutting as they get smaller. So normally I'll have a couple of those mounted up. This is a Brassler Scotch Bright. This is just a number nine short uh, bristle brush and diolite rubber wheels. You've seen all these before. These are going to be two carbides I use, and I'm going to put the item numbers up for all of these at the end of the video. H42R, H42R, a flame, and a taper. This is HP Dent Yellowstone. This will do a great job if you do have to adjust post center. Um, you don't want to create any heat. This will do a great job of reducing without creating heat. This is a six unit. I use this you know, quite often for courses I'm giving or lecturing. We're gonna go ahead and green stage finish it to get this result, okay? That's kind of the goal. First things first, I'm going to remove the sprues. And you could do it very simply by just using uh, the large taper carbide. I use the taper more than the round end. Um, I just tend to prefer it. And I'm just going to go through and, and do a, a quick reduction of the sprues. I'll go ahead and dust it off. Once that's done, we'll be able to start our green stage finishing. First thing I do, using the Renfrew Brilliant Disc, I'll cut into the incisal embrasure about a millimeter. Um, remember, everything that we're gonna do is gonna shrink. So even though it might look a little drastic now, um, we want to over-exaggerate everything. And I'll go for the incisal edge uh, embrasure first, then I'll go ahead and start opening up my gingival embrasure. You know, you got to remember the mill gets us about 80% there. The rest is up to us. And then this is where you could actually go ahead and apply your artistry. The most important part of any uh, zirconia case, especially in the aesthetic zone, in the anterior 6 through 11, is always going to be gingival embrasures. Um, it is the make it or break it for a case. Uh, it's the part that really brings it to life. Um, compared to, you know, zirconia, it's very easy to get that kind of chunk, one piece chunk look um, if you don't go in and open up those gingival embrasures manually. And you can see here, I'll go ahead and start opening those up. Um, I'm flipping back and forth from the incisal edge to the facial view because basically if this was a hybrid, I'm looking for the screw axis holes and making sure that I don't collide with one because that would obviously be catastrophic and we'd have to remill our restoration. Now I'm going to come back through and I'm going to open those up a little bit more. And sometimes everybody asks me, how do you know how deep to go? Um, you know, I tell everybody when you get a little bit uncomfortable, you know, you can go pretty deep on these gingival embrasures and not have to worry, especially on a hybrid. Uh, there's so much mass and so much zirconia that you don't have to worry about that whatsoever. I'm going to go ahead and you can see I'm rolling the disc. I'm not actually cutting into the zirconia. I'm kind of rolling it left and right. Again, just concentrating on those gingival embrasures. I spend most of my time in that area. This is the flame and I'm going to go in and again, look at how deep I'm digging into there, you guys. I'm really kind of just opening those up. I'm going to accentuate them as much as possible. Now dust off your zirconia frequently. This way you can see what you've done. 
And we're going to go ahead and leave the left hand side untouched and just go ahead and concentrate on the right. This way you can see the difference between the finished side and the unfinished side. Now we'll go ahead and just give the teeth a once over, kind of smooth out any mill marks that may be there. And again, when I'm doing this, I'm not changing the design. The design has already been established. What I'm doing now is just bringing it to life. So I'm not going to go through and say, I don't like this lateral or I don't like this cuspid and put my own spin on it. Um, the, the position of the teeth has already been predetermined for me. I just need to apply my artistry. Now I'm going to go ahead and use that taper carbide to remove some of that bulk that is on our gingival tissue. Kind of beginning to contour that in. Um, tissue has as much texture and contour as teeth do. And it's not just one solid flat piece. You know, and there's different styles and in, in the amount of um, texture that tissue has varies from patient to patient but it absolutely is there so keep that in mind remember when cutting zirconia um, the faster you go the smoother it cuts uh, the slower you go the you can risk you know chips Make sure your burrs and diamonds and carbides, that they're all running through your wheels. See, now I'm starting to define uh, the gingiva a little bit more. Starting to give it some texture. This is a good tip. Um, this is just simply a, a simple dolphin carver. I've sharpened that end with a rubber wheel and it allows you to, if you want, go in there and really, really create some nice, sharp, deep points. Separation between the tooth and the gingival cuff. Um, it it's, works really well, smooths out really well. I'll use this a lot of times. Sometimes I don't, it just all depends. You gotta remember fine, fine, fine detail a lot of times is lost through the sintering process because of the shrinkage. So again, if you're gonna use an instrument to create fine detail like this, make sure you cut it deep enough, make sure you exaggerate it enough, that way after sintering, your details that you applied are still visible. And we're really starting to come out nicely at this point. You can see the restoration begin to take shape. And of course at this time, it's you know the moment that you take to make this restoration your own. Uh, you could apply as much or as little artistry uh, at this time as you would like. Completely up to you. Once you start working on it and you really start getting into the details, it's easy to lose yourself in your work and kind of just forget about time. Um, that happens a lot. It's, it's kind of just relaxing finishing your zirconia at this point.
the more work you put in at this time, the better and obviously the less work you'll have to do post center. Again, just concentrating on some of those finer details. And you can see how the side we're finishing is really coming to life compared to the side we haven't finished. Now it's going to be surface texture and anatomy. And there's going to be three different types, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Uh, this is really kind of the funnest part, I think, um, as there is an infinite number of ways that you can apply that surface texture and anatomy to that individual tooth. Um, it could be how long you take it down the length of the tooth. It could be how deep you cut it in. Uh, it's really sky is the limit um, as far as what you want to do. I could take these six teeth and just by applying the surface texture and anatomy differently, I could keep doing the same case over and over and over again and it would look different each time. Um, it just depends. The length, the, the depth that you apply it, how aggressive that it is applied, you know, can literally give you an uh, endless amount of possibilities. And this is what really kind of defines the restoration, brings it to life, and, and this is where you really have the, the chances an individual artist to shine. So we'll go ahead and brush off our zirconia and take a look. In tertiary anatomy, there's broad horizontal striations, there's narrow horizontal striations, and then of course there's stippling. You could use all three, you could use one. Again, this is completely up to you. Just remember again when applying that surface texture and that anatomy to apply it deep enough and aggressive enough so that it'll show up after sintering. You can see now that we've really created a very nice individuality to the teeth. And again, depending on your case, depending on your patient, your doctor, you know, how, where, and how much uh, surface texture anatomy you apply is completely up to you. Now we'll come back with the carver. Just kind of smooth up some areas. The more finesse you do at this point, cleaning it up and uh, not leaving as many stray marks. I like to call it noise. Um, there's a difference at this point between surface texture anatomy and just diamond marks. The diamond marks are what I like to call just noise. It's not supposed to be there. It's not part of the tooth. It doesn't look good. Uh, in zirconia, 
is different than layered ceramics. And layered ceramics, if you drag a diamond across a, you know, layered porcelain after you fire, it's probably more than likely going to smooth out a little bit. In zirconia, it will not. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the more time you spend with kind of some of the finesse work and cleaning it up, not leaving it so rough, the better your post center finish will be. You can see how closed those gingival embrasures are on the side that we did not finish and really the individual look we have on the side that we did. And that's really what brings zirconia uh, to life. When you're talking about full arch zirconia and hybrid zirconia, a lot of times you'll see that kind of chunk look. And that's more than likely because after milling, uh, the zirconia was just placed in the sintering oven to sinter without any of this finishing being done beforehand. By green stage finishing it, this is just like doing your ceramics or your finishing on layered ceramics, but you do it before instead of after. Now we'll go ahead and just wear down our incisal edges and we'll put our wear facets on there. And we'll just use the rubber wheel for this. I like to use the black pencil to go ahead and mark the highest point of the incisal edge. That way when I do wear down my inside when I do wear down my incisal edges, I know that I am not shortening them. As long as the black pencil remains, I have not shortened that edge. This is when I'll go ahead and do a wear facet, and you can see how I kind of illustrated that. It's a push and pull up, and that will give you that teardrop shape. You will push the diamond in and peel it straight up and that will create that nice diamond shape, that teardrop shape that is commonly seen with a wear facet. Here you can go a little bit deeper, thinly come across. Now let's talk about anatomy and where it is. If we look at a central, there is two depressions, mesial and one distal. On a lateral, there's one depression. And on a cuspid, there's two. On the central, the mesial one is gonna be more narrow. The distal one will be more wider. We can use Scotch-Brite. Scotch-Brite is, I mean, it is just, it's pretty awesome if you haven't used one before. Um, it gets the finish of the zirconia just smooth as glass within seconds, and it's very forgiving. Um, although it looks like it's taking massive amounts of material away, it's really not. It's just smoothing everything up. If you haven't tried one of these, uh, pick yourself up one and give it a shot. And, um, you know, in areas where you'll get rougher zirconia, um, it really helps in smoothing it out and it does it very, very quickly. And it takes away the material you don't want there and it leaves the material you want. And you can kind of see where we're at now. Between the two sides, the finished and the unfinished. And we can go back and smooth some of this up. And there's a good idea of kind of the result you can expect. Again, look at the concentration in the gingival embrasures and what a difference that makes. Thanks for watching. 